welcome to the Real Business Roundtable. Today, we're going to talk about handling objections about your pricing. So yes. when people come up with their price point, you need to understand that there's a reason behind that pricing. You have competition. You have the value that you're providing. What are you going to bring to the table? What is the cost of goods sold or the service provided? Bunch of bunch of factors that go into it. When you run into a potential client that's pushing back on your price point, you need to always go back to what value are you going to bring to the table? For example, if you're going to provide something that's going to provide efficiency, time is the most valuable commodity out there. So if you save somebody time, you can reiterate that like, hey, we will cut your, 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 the time it takes to do X, Y, Z by two thirds saving you enough time to focus on your business or focus on something else. And you always want to reiterate what you're providing for value because that value should always be wor worth much, the, what you're providing should be worth much more than what you're asking for for a price point. If it evens, if it's about even, people are more likely to stick with the saying, hey, you're too expensive. So you got to find that sweet spot. Yeah, but you also have to understand your value but when you have a price point that may be a little bit high based on competitors or based on the market and maybe a little bit high and you under but you un, you have a good understanding of your value then you have to justify it in you know the return that they're getting mm -hmm. I, I lost my train of thought but, but if you so for example if you provide digital marketing services and you're going to expand somebody's visibility you need to always paint the picture and let's say let's say you charge five thousand dollars a month Someone might say, oh, that's a lot of money. And you always say, well, how much growth do you want? Your foot's on the gas pedal. We can start smaller. We can go at like a $3,000 rate. But by the way, you have a competitor two states over that's spending triple of that on ads alone. So you want to give them case studies. You want to present a case why you're asking for that much or your strategy or your staff might be worth more because they do a damn good job. So you need to explain that to them. Oh, you're too expensive. Well, we always make sure our clients are spending no more than 20% of their top line revenue. So technically it's not expensive. It's right in line with your sales. Also, one way to position your pitch when you're talking about, um, you know, let's say, let's say marketing or whatever, something that helps someone get more sales. Always compare the price to the amount of money that they could make. So let's say it's a, it's a dealership, right? Mm -hmm. How much do dealerships make per car? Would you say average? A couple thousand? It varies, yeah. Let's say $2,000, right? Let's say they're selling 30 cars per month at $2,000, so $60,000 per month, right? Yeah, I'm wait. 2,000 times 30, yeah, 60,000. 30, yeah, so let's say they're making $60,000 a mm -hmm. month, and this is, it could be anything, actually, dealership. Let's just say it's, you know, a high ticket product that sells for $2,000, and they're selling right now about 30 per month. Your your product or your, your service costs, you know, let's say 2,000, let's say $5,000 per month. They need three three sales in order to recuperate that money. So they're going to be saying, oh, you know, it's kind of expensive, whatever this and that they might be objecting the, the amount of money that they're going to have to spend. But you also have to, you know, okay. So in the next three months, in the next three months, how many vehicles could we sell by using this technology? Well, if you're trying to provide them a service or a technology to help accelerate the sales of vehicles, let's say you can do the mathematics and present to them, Hey, we're going to help you move 30% more vehicles because you have leftover inventory at the end of each month. A, a dealership should be moving more than 50% of their inventory every single month. If you're not, you're missing the boat. What I, yeah, what I was saying, I just remembered. So what I was saying is if, if someone's objecting the price and they're saying, oh, I want to wait a couple months, right? Which is normally what they say. They, they'll, they'll say, you know, I need to talk to someone. I need to wait a couple months. How much, if we're going to bring you, you know, five more sales or let's say at sale a day or if we're going to bring you 10 more sales a month how much is that costing you by waiting if we're bringing you 10 sales a month two thousand dollars per sale that's sixty thousand dollars that's just left on the table you're wasting sixty thousand dollars for uh for a six thousand dollar investment or whatever i said so you gotta you gotta help them understand by 
being optimistic optimistic about how many you know optimusket dude i'm like i Op- can't talk optimusketeers three musketeers he's making me think of the candy you know box. what i'm trying to say right chocolate covered nougat you know what i'm trying to say yes musket like you got to compare like i'm just going to say it straight up you got to compare you got to ha- create some urgency if they want to wait 3 months and it costs them $6000 to work with you per month and you can bring them 5 to 10 different more sales than they're doing now it justifies the price they're missing out on $60000 that we're looking three months ahead. You're missing out on sixty thousand dollars. Do you get what I'm trying to say, <laughs> bro? Can you just did the head move? Yeah, the poof. bro. You, you know, can you just like, uh, dude? There's, I'm tr- I, I know what I'm. Tr- you get. I know. I know what you're saying. I'm gonna melt. I don't feel good anymore. You sick again? <laughs> yeah, you got no. like a thermometer in your mouth. You have like an ice pack. Yeah. So if whatever your price point is, you want to make sure that you're presenting the value and how it will outweigh what the investment is. Always go back on value, go back on what you're going to provide, go back on what you're going to solve. Nine times out of 10, if the prospect is intelligent enough, they'll, they'll go, okay, I get it, I get it. Or... Maybe they just don't have the cash right now. You got to respect that. And you got to kind of bow out respectfully and come back, check in with them in a few months because just sometimes people are shy to say they can't afford it. You got to kind of feel them out. Yeah. Because you can say if someone pushes back on price, says, you know, roughly ballpark, what's your budget? And if they say, well, I got to shop around. Then you jump in and say, I need to express to you, Mr. Prospect, that there are different variations or copycats out there that claim to do X, Y, Z, but here's why we can provide a better value. Here's why we're going to provide faster results. The beauty to our program is X, Y, Z. You may want to consider that when you're shopping around and make sure you ask these questions. Give your prospect the tools in order to see that you are different and you are the choice that they need to make and go with. Because if you leave that meeting, all right, sir, yeah, check other prices. You're going to have some knucklehead that's offering some backyard bullshit that's not going to work. And you're going to learn the hard way. So when you when you leave that sales meeting with the intention of them shopping around, make sure you give them the tools on what to ask for. For example, we sell a technology. There are similar technologies out there that are not really similar. They claim to have the same result but when you lift when you go under the hood and look at how it actually works that's important for customers to know so sometimes we'll get pushed back oh that technology is too expensive and we'll say well mr prospect it's 100 percent exclusive all the data we provide is not shared data you get access to customers before they go to your competition over 470 data points are scraped <laughs> And it uses machine learning, deep learning AI in order to analyze and qualify that person. It also pulls from smart home data. Mr. 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 or Miss. Just go to sleep, bro. Mr. or Miss prospect. So you tell them those key elements. So when they're out shopping around and talking to inferior solutions out there, they'll know in the back of their head, like, Oh shit, this is not AI driven. They're just scraping Google search data. There's nothing special about that. Oh, what Andy told me now helps me understand why we should go with this. So always give them the tools. <laughs> Bro, I'm so mad at myself right now, dog. I was going to say something too. Oh, wait, wait. It's coming back to me. Just hold on. Wait. Three Musketeers. Yeah. Wait. Nougat. Nougat. Chocolate. <laughs> no, you... Wait. I. Oh my God. It was such a good point. It's like too, a just bro. chatting hybrid. Bro, it is. Oh my God. It's a God. hybrid. I don't know. I remember what I was going to say. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Emotions speak. So. <laughs> so listen. People always say in sales pitches. You know. Emotions. Speak to someone's. Speak on behalf of someone's. Uh, bro. Speak hit to their emotions. emotions. People always say in sales pitches, in sales pitches, hit their emotions. But I don't, I don't believe in hitting their emotions and hitting their, you know, their soft spots. <clears throat> what I do believe in is that 
if you are confident that their business is going to grow and if you help them get to that confident that same confidence level of the product that you're providing and helping their business grow and where they can be and where they can go with the help of your product or service so always focus on value 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 if someone doesn't agree with your price point you need to be confident don't flinch and explain why the price point is the price point so I'm pretty sure people have heard of buying leads. When you purchase leads, oh, I, 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 I buy leads. Okay, you buy leads. Instant gratification. How many other people that are your competitors are being sold those same leads? Now, you're dealing with a variety of competitors, maybe at different levels, you don't know, that are pounding on that prospect's door. First, pissing them off. Second, they're getting overwhelmed. Third, you're just a quote. You're not who they want to talk to. They don't know you from anybody. Same thing goes for data. So when we're out there providing clients access to very exclusive customer or buyer data, it is very important for people to know that we don't share this data with people. That's why it has this price point. It's not shared. So shared leads are similar to shared data. It's dog shit. Everybody's diving in the same pool. You probably have talked about something near your phone and you said, yeah, um, I want to buy a new tent. I'm going to get a new tent. I'm going to go camping. Then you get hit with a gazillion tent advertisements. That becomes overwhelming. So a technology that we have, it allows our clients to get first access to those customers giving you a huge competitive edge to contact them first through a Google ad, a, a social ad. And because it's exclusive and a hundred billion people aren't diving into the same actionable data, it commands a higher price point. Um, I, I have to say that the stuff that we have is probably one of the most expensive out there. It has to be. Probably. Oh, wait, For other than one, there is another one that's like five times more expensive and it's way smaller for efficacy and it's been proven. I don't even know how they stay in business. But anyways, so when you have a price point, make sure that you oh, explain. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Man, the virus is getting to the center <laughs> core cerebellum. It's starting to eat the cerebellum. <laughs> no, I can't do that. <laughs> no, but <laughs> Today is the Andy G podcast. And today no, we're going to talk about... This is funny because the whole time you're pitching this... <laughs> I got something for you. And then, he comes back, something. and then he comes back and he goes, so that's how it ties into <laughs> objections <laughs> against cost. Back in the day when videos became really hot, like video optimization, and I was, yeah. we were so young in business, <clears throat> I would be pitching everybody video. I'm like, I can take what you do and put it to video yeah. and get lots of traffic. Yeah. And like, there was a running joke with me and my business partner. He's like, dude, you're going to stop pitching the janitors at malls. <laughs> hey, see all that sweeping you're doing? I can take what you do and put it to video and we can get lots of attention. I'd be at like kiosks and stuff. <laughs> like someone's selling funny, earrings yeah. at a kiosk. I'm like, we can make a commercial. <laughs> we can make a badass commercial. I was born to sell. I've been selling since I was a little kid. I know. It's No, it's nothing bad one about time, it. One time we were in a meeting. And I'm like, I'm talking and they go, oh, you don't have to sell me again. And then, then Jake's like, that's how he talks. <laughs> that's how he talks. No, dude, the meeting, the, yeah, the meeting was literally set. It wasn't a meeting. It was literally just, we were going to have lunch with this guy to, to, to network. <laughs> and, and he goes into this really aggressive sales pitch. And then we're both sitting there, like looking at each other. I'm like, yo, this is, <laughs> that's just how he talks. <laughs> this is, it. yeah, it was funny, but. No, that was good. It was, I was just laughing really hard because you're literally like it, you were talking about our technology, but like it, you weren't tying it into the price thing. Yeah. You know, but with the, you know, the tech is not cheap and we get a lot of like, what, how much is it? Whoa. And we explain that it's best of class. It's used by the yeah, world's yeah. biggest brands. And the thing is with pricing is that it, it's tough. It really is tough. Um, you know, we we always go back and say, you know, maybe we should be a little bit more expensive. Maybe we should maybe we should charge a little bit more mm -hmm. because of the value that we bring. The people that the, the return that our clients get is astronomical <clears throat> compared to 
the price that we the, the compared 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 to what we cost. Compare them three musketeers bar to a Milky Way bar. One has caramel and the other has nougat. Oh yeah. Mm. Well, we want to thank you for watching <laughs> the Real Business Roundtable. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and be sure to follow us on Instagram. And if you have any questions, you can always send us a DM. Make sure you hit the notification bell to find out when you have we have <laughs> turn on post notifications so that you get notified every single time we post a new video. That was good. See now you know how I feel. Beat out. Oh wait. Oh yeah. Peace out. <laughs>